factor loading. It's a major component of factor analysis and principal component analysis. They both use this. So how it works is um, you have a bunch of survey questions and you're going to create a bunch of new component variables, also called factors. I call them new factors, latent variables. What they're going to be is whatever this new variable is, is going to have several of these questions that all are strongly correlated, which means they're being answered similarly. So let's just, let's just do one. So let's take question one. We run a correlation between that and the new component, which is made up of several other, other questions, and we get the correlation. So the first correlation to component one is pretty high, 0.58. We do the same thing for component two and for component three, right? We run correlations between the individual item and each of the new components to check their correlations. So the second one is 0.11, nothing to write home about. And the third one is 0 0.08. So there's no question about it that question number one belongs under component number one because it loading factor is greater than 0.4. So the loading factor, it again, is, is basically the correlation, right? So it's obvious with question number one. They're not always this obvious. Not every item will load neatly like question number one did. So the software is going to determine under which of the new components each one of these survey questions should go with because it's got the, the highest correlation or the highest loading factor. So let's just pretend the computer did them all. Boop. Do the magic of video. And so component one has these questions, two has these questions, three has these questions. Now you're going to run into something that, that is problematic with factor loading, with factor analysis altogether. Every once in a while you're going to get a question that doesn't load up so nicely. So let's just pretend question seven. We ran three correlations between the three new components. And we got a correlation of 0.47 for the first one, 0.42 for the second one. 0.13 for the third one. So it's obviously the third one is not going to be it. But look how close 1 and 2 are, right? So this one is a little bit bigger, but we're only talking about 5 one hundredths of a, of a bigger correlation than, than number 2, so it's not a big difference. This is what we call overlap. Now, we try to get rid of overlap by using a rotation. The orthogonal rotation, uh, that's the very max on SPSS, normally does a really good job of, of what I call raking out any overlap between which quest, which new component these items should go under. But it doesn't get rid of all of it. Okay, so, but again, a rotation will remove the overlap, but sometimes it won't, okay? Sometimes there's too much overlap between the two, and that, that can become problematic. It's up to the researcher to decide which one of these items should be under which component, right? Like, we could have put number seven under number two, and the results would probably be minimal, but we never know for sure. Okay, let's try something else. You also might run into something that like, like this. Here's question number 10, and we do the three correlations between the three new components, and we get different numbers. So the first correlation is negative 0.09. That's tiny. That's not going to go. And then 0.16, that's not greater than 0.4, so that wouldn't go there. This one is not greater than 0.4 either. Okay, so this number 10 really doesn't correlate very well with any of these. So you might want to think of not using that question under number 10, right? Do not use number 10 because it doesn't really correlate with any of the new factors. So you would just remove this question out. Just pull it out. Boom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run one real quick for you in SPSS so I can show you what's going on here. Okay, so please hold. I made this survey a long time ago trying to gauge the fear of statistics that many students have. And I made it so we would reverse code everything. So what that means is strong one is strongly agree, two is agree, blah, 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 all the way down to five is strongly disagree. Now, I would reverse code these so uh, a five would mean I strongly agree. So the larger the number, we add all these up to create a new variable. The larger the number, the, the more fearful of stats somebody is. But again, after we recode these, this is a different, that's a different video, okay? But now we're going to go to Analyze, Dimension Reduction, 
Get in there, you factor. And what do you know? They're already in there. Oh, no, 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 no. So there's the 23 questions, okay? So under descriptives, you want all of these things, univariate, initial, everything on the left-hand side. Click continue. Extraction. This is the default principal component analysis, right? I don't use scree plots. Eh, I'll put one in there just for you guys. Based on eigenvalues greater than one. So any any new component that has an eigenvalue greater than one will be considered a new factor. Okay. If you know beforehand that you only want to come out with three factors, you can click that button and type in three, right? Based on research or something. But if not, don't worry about it. Click it out. Click continue. Rotation, we tend to use Verimax first. That's an orthogonal rotation. In other words, it, it it tries to pull out as much overlap between these items as possible. If you think your new factors are going to be somehow correlated to each other, you should probably use the oblique rotation, which is the direct oblomen. But we tend to use Verimax, and it automatically does the rotated solutions for you scores we could keep these as new variables if you want in other words the new factors would be saved as new factors and we're not going to do that in this video and in our options this is the important stuff right here right we're going to put them in order by size and we don't want an item if it doesn't load up with at least 0.4 that's what this is right here right this is where you decide what you want your load loading factor minimum to be and we tend to use 0.4. Sometimes we use 0.3, but depending on which book you read. Click Continue. Click OK. We're going to check out the results here. So here's the means and standard deviations of, of each item. Don't really care about that. Here's the correlation table. Really don't care about that. you got correlations all over the place, significant ones. Um, again, this is just the factor loading video. So let's just go right to communalities. This is... The extraction number, also known as the loading factor. These are the loading factors. So again, anything that's less than 0.4 is going to be problematic for you. So, you know, 0.4, that means that this first question, statistics makes me cry, does load up significantly under one of the new factors. Let's see how many new factors we got here. Oh, we didn't do that yet. Uh, no, no, right here. Boom. Right? So you look at the eigenvalue. So out of our 23 questions, whatever it was, we got four new components, right? So there's going to be four new components. Go back up here. Oh, sorry. Uh, 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 uh. So that means that question one does load up under one of the four. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. This one right here, 3.43. I don't understand statistics. Doesn't load up so well, right? It's only 0.34. Remember that. I don't like statistics. And there's another one. Computers are useful only for video games. And computers are out to get me. So anything that loads up under less than 0.4 could be problematic. It looks like we got one, two, three, four here. So, but not always, because these were pretty close to four. Um, so I'm predicting that they will not be problematic. So, again, here's the four new components. Let's go down and see our scree plot. Anything over one here whoop, can be considered a new factor, and we don't really need scree plots because we know there's four. And this is the component matrix, but it has not been rotated, so don't use this one. Go down to the rotated. So under the first new factor, right, all these questions kind of clearly go under the first factor, okay? There's our computers are out to get me. Computers hate me. So even though it loaded up kind of poorly from the extraction, it did quite well under the component. And these are the questions that go under number two. So you notice this one, it has overlap, right? It's under 0.473 under component one, but on 0.523 under two. So the larger the number, that should be the winner component. So it does go under two. And these other ones... This goes under, these three go under component three, and these go under component four. So I don't see any problems there whatsoever, even though some of the loadings were not quite over 0.4. So that was that in a nutshell. I hope it helped. MGZ, out.
Bye, Sarah.